There are studies to suggest, uh, at least imply, that children, and particularly young children, are less susceptible to serious infection, but more importantly, that transmit less. This applies to children under the age of 10. Uh, they transmit less, and they are much less likely to be the source of infection within a school. But over 10, which would be our you know, middle school, high school, certainly colleges, would uh, tend to you know, have more of the transmission as well. If that's truly the case, and this is somewhat limited data, it, it helps maybe strategies for the younger children, those that are maybe five through nine or 10, to maybe be able to have classes together but when you get older, maybe that's when it's still gonna to have to be remote. We're still trying to clarify this. I think for communities that do choose to reintroduce in-person learning, making the classroom safer looks a lot like introducing the interventions that we've all become accustomed to observing in our everyday lives. That means physical distancing, which in this case means keeping kids apart, mask use for everyone, not just teachers, but also the kids, improving ventilation to try to get some fresh air in and providing as many opportunities as possible for hand hygiene. And it's really those suite of interventions taken together that will reduce the risk of transmission in the classroom. The other important attribute about thinking it through this problem is that children are at generally low risk of severe illness, but it's not just children in schools, it's also adults and this is their workplace. And so we need to consider their health and safety as well in this decision-making process and acknowledge that they are the ones who are really at high risk of severe illness and thinking through this problem.